Nobody is hearing us. We are asking for restructuring. No one is hearing us. Then how do you want the problems to be solved? All right, Chief. So, what it means, therefore, Still. is that the incoming presidential candidates, because it is too late now for us to now say we must make a new constitution before the next elections. Mm. But the incoming presidential, uh, uh, the, the presidential candidates right now, one of the things we must demand from them is a commitment, a solemn promise that when they get into office, they must restructure Nigeria so that it works better and for all of us. I am not one of those who believe that Nigeria should be broken up, should be bacchanized. There is strength in our Dolly, Dolly Parton's coat of many colors. There is strength in our large population of 217.6 million people. But you see, when you take your unity for granted, go and ask India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. They used to be one country. Go and ask Eritrea and Ethiopia. They used to be one country. Go and ask Sudan and Southern Sudan. They used to be one country. So you do not, that was why when the Igbos wanted to go in 1967, telling Nojuku, give us guns. And the federal government, after the program, made the mistake of thinking that it was going to be defeated, the Biafra was going to be a bicycle operation from the Unsuka flank, Unsuka axis. They didn't know they were going into a three-year bloody civil war where over three million people were killed. You can know when you start a war, but you do not know when it will end. It end. So right. it was still at a round table in January 1970 that Obasanjo received the reins of surrender from General Philip F. Young on behalf of the Biafrans with the three hours that Mr. Cham, uh, one of you mentioned, reconstruction, rehabilitation, and, and reconciliation. reconciliation. But don't forget, Mr. Ms. MC, that by 1967, the Igbos were already manufacturing Ogbunigwe, virtually like intercontinental ballistic missile. They were already refining oil. We are not still refining oil. We are waiting for Dangote. So a country like that, that is moribund, how do you want it to grow without looking at our problems? All right, Chief. I agree, therefore, with my pastor there. So sorry. You are... Chief. Uh, I... I should stop. No, I do not want you to stop. But because we are working with time, and then some of the questions. No, Chief, they will lead us on. We might stay healthy in five, but there are yeah, other questions I that just we want need to, to say, touch on. I want to say that, uh, I want to say that uh, the pastor got it right, that we must go back to brass tacks. We must re-engineer and refurbish our moral ethos our ethics, our value system. When, when they give national honors now to some people because it must be given, national honors must be given because you served in such and such a position before you are serving. How well have you served or, did, or are you serving for you to merit that position? You, you decorate certificated 419ers or to coastals. You, you, you give them gallons. You give them doctorate degrees, honoris causa. At the churches, your churches and my churches, they sit at the front pews. And in the mosque, they sit at the front rows of mats because they have made money. Money whose source and pedigree are questionable. So we must re-engineer and refurbish our national ethos so that we begin to relegate money baggism, share wealth for the mm. sake of wealth, I begin to respect our value system. When we begin to respect our value system and our ethics, respect for the family, for our fathers, our mothers, no children telling their dad, get out. If your home is rotten, of course, you are going to a society, you, you will form a part of the society that you will, you will also make rotten. 
So it right. must start from the home, okay. from man and wife. That is why in my house, I have a democratic setup. I cannot take a decision just because I'm the head of the family. We must all sit down and discuss the matter. I'm the INEC umpire. We vote. <laughs> the, my, wife, my wife is also allowed to vote. But if there's a tie, I will have the casting vote. With that, I'm already teaching my children the value system of education, of, 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 of democracy. Mm. And that you cannot seize power, you cannot take a decision by force, because that will no longer be democracy, but any other crazy, except demo. <laughs> thank, thank you very th much. Thank you very much, sir. We'll hand over the mic to, um, to Comrade Ma Odi. And, and there are some questions that came from the high table that I also want to throw your direction, seeing that uh, Dr. NOB spoke on elections issue, uh, that should the presidential candidate who failed at the party primaries be allowed to pick a party primary into the Senate or House of Representatives? And I'll throw this one out also. When no action is seen to be taken against those caught in electoral fraud, what does that say to the people? What should we do? Another question asked is, what does presidential pardon for convicted looters of our economy say to Nigerians? Uh, sir, you could also respond to that when we get there. And uh, can one go to court against this immoral action of the president to prevent these economic saboteurs from taking new political office? I think uh, that would come back to chief. But let's hear from... Oh dear. Okay, my name is Comrade Maudi, General Secretary Alliance for Credible Elections. NOB asked me, my comrade, to, this morning, and I needed to push things around to be here. I came late, I'm sorry. Uh, critical success agents won federal government. If they want credible election, it will happen. Second, INEC, the umpire. If they want free, fair, peaceful, inclusive, credible and acceptable elections, it will happen. Another one is political parties. The fourth one is the candidates. And then the electorates, the voters. Then we that observe the elections. Because who is observing us? And the media. If we all want, we are the critical agents and the, the stakeholders in elections. Now we have presidential election is less than five months now. It will happen in February 2023. So, if we are, all of us agree that this election will be free, fair, peaceful, inclusive, and credible, and acceptable, because one thing is to be accepted. Because if you say your election is credible and the people say no, then there is issue of legitimacy. So, we all are working to it. We cannot just come here and talk and go back and thinking that the free, fair, credible election will fall down as manner from heaven. It's not possible. We must collectively raise our voices. This is the time to talk. And it is not about my candidate. It's about Nigeria. Where we are today, we are not supposed to be there. And so many people are dying every day. And you know as well as I do, as Christians, that when a society is polluted by the blood of innocent citizens, the Almighty God will judge so we need to raise our voices. We need also to, to, now we don't have time to write a new constitution. We have a new year 2022 electoral act. That is a very good improvement on the last year 2010 electoral act as amended. We have a new, brand new electoral act that came also with the good things in the other electoral act. We need to look at them. We need to study it. We need to know everything about it. So we will not allow anybody to deceive us. We are now crapping for people making noise. And when you look at, critically are the people who are out now. They have been there all along. And we don't have a, a good governance. So we need to actually have a conversation, like our, my comrade said. We need to have a conversation and enter into a social contract with who were all the presidential candidates, if possible, 18 of them, 
including the guy that just left, he's also a presidential candidate. We need to enter a social contract that when you get there, for 12 months you've been there, that you are going to, we are going to have, we are going to have a kind of benchmark that when you get there, these are the things we want to see. One, two, three things. If they want banditry and kidnapping, an unknown gunmen and unknown gunwomen to end today, to end today. Because they are involved. They are involved. If they want all your theft to end today, to end today. If they want all kinds of fraud going on, to end today, to end today. And why they are not wanting and not doing anything about it is because you and I are taking side. No, he's from my, side, my tribe. Don't talk bad. About it. Even if he's bad, let him be bad. And the society is dying. Your contribution, my contribution, is what is making bad governance to thrive. And what is making Nigerian society to die is dying every second. And for us to keep it alive, all of us must raise our voices and take action as of yesterday, not today. And Nigerian people are wonderful people. If they have a good leadership, they will follow. It's easy for them to follow. And that's why they crap even for people who have just even achieved a little. And you see Nigerians crapping for them. You are our savior. Not only really that they have saved, that they have shown difference. Because we are surrounded by bad people. And then when we see a good one, we celebrate. We will celebrate if we see good leadership. But it does not happen overnight. Why is working in the other societies? It's not that they are not bad. It is that the people are always there to call them to order. If I, you see me after talking today, doing something that is not, you say, are you not the one who spoke very well the other day? You are not supposed to do this. My conscience will judge me because of us have God's spirit in ourselves. And it will judge. We have to, the only reason why they were arrested or election offenders and they will allow them to go, even after investigating them. Because they are the ones who send them. And because we allow them to do that. When we say no, they respect no. When we come out and say it cannot happen this way, it will not happen. The people are the owners of the power. They all are right, holding on behalf, and on behalf of all of us. They are holding it on behalf of and all of us. Thanks. And we have to recognize that and make sure they fall in line and do what we want. Thank, Thank you. you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. And uh, would let uh, Dr. Cosmo speak on what the presidential pardon for convicted looters, what does he say to Nigerians? Well, it, 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 what he says to Nigeria depends on who the Nigerian is and what he is hearing. Um, presidential pardons for offenders may not necessarily be bad, especially if the people that are pardoned had repented of their sins and have had a change of heart. God forgives people. And if God forgives people, leaders are representatives of God. They can extend forgiveness, but not for political reasons, for reasons where there is genuine change of heart. So if those people who are pardoned genuinely repented and have done the necessary restitutions, returning what they stole, what made them be uh, in prison before, then, of course, uh, the people will accept that. Where the people will frown as such is when it is a political gambling. Charles Carson was implicated in the Watergate scandal in America. He went to prison. They went in the prison there, he not only got repented, but he saw the state of the prisoners and came out to form a globally known prison ministry that is still working today even though he is dead. Uh, so there are such people. That guy was thoroughly repented, thoroughly changed, and he came out to begin to do things that will bring about reforms in the prison. If that is the kind of situation we find in Nigeria, well, of course, the president could extend those, uh, that kind of forgiveness. But if it's for, just for political game, uh, I don't think the people will like it, and I don't think anybody will like it. Like it. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> We're so pressed for time, we can't take any more of the comments. But... Uh, we want to appreciate our panelists uh, to our keynote speaker, Chief Dr. Michael Zokume. Thank you very much, sir. There's so much said. I felt like I sat through a history class listening to Nigeria from the very beginning 
before we got our name. Thank you very much for that, sir. Thank you, Dr. Cosma Zilechuku. I appreciate you, the effort you put into this and more. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation. And Mrs. Ma Odi. Thank you very much, Ma, for making it here and contributing. We truly appreciate. We'll move on quickly. There will be some quick, quick goodwill messages. We'll just allow for a mini 30 seconds for quick ones. Engineer Sani has left. So we would get to hear from Dr. Eni Frey, International Director, African Strategic Discipleship Mission. He'll give a quick goodwill message. Thank you very much, sir. If you can, in many 30 seconds, would appreciate it. Privileged to be here today. Uh, this 11th edition is my first edition. And so as I'm, <laughs> as I'm thinking about this topic today, about the critical agents of success, uh, my summary statement would be this. And for thought leaders and religious leaders and community leaders, there's an inseparable relationship between these three things. Our convictions, lead to our choices, which leads to our consequences. You cannot separate belief and behavior. And so as we move forward with 2023, I think there's an application to all of us that we drive home the convictions in our churches and our communities because those convictions will lead to choices and those choices will guide the consequences for the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We also get to hear a quick goodwill message from Honorable Joy, Labour Party candidate Abuja, South Federal Constituency. One minute. Please let's welcome Honorable Joy. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Chairman, my daddy, greetings, everyone. I bear greetings from Abuja South. My name is Joy Ohiomero. I'm the candidate for Labour Party House of Rep, Abuja South. It comprises of Kwali, Abaji, Kuje, and Gwagwalada. My goodwill message is Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria will be rescued. Don't give up. We will get there. By God's great God is on our side. He has heard our cry. He has seen what is happening. And by God's grace, we will get there. We'll have a better Nigeria. We'll have a Nigeria of our dream. Come 2023, I urge you all, go and collect your PVC. If you know that you have not collected yours, go and collect your PVC. We own it to our own born generation to get it right come 2023. God bless you all. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. We would also want to hear quickly one minute from Comrade Chidi, also uh, going to represent Abuja North's federal constituency. Is Comrade Chidi here? Okay. Then we would hear from uh, Chief, Chief Raymond Nkem Dirim, former director of National Operation DSS. A quick goodwill message. One minute. Okay, he's here. Mr. Chairman, I just want to express uh, my delight at what I witnessed here today. Well, like you've heard, I was um, Director of Operations of the State Security Service. I retired about seven years ago. So my constituency is security. Now, having listened to the topic today, I just want us to place a little more emphasis on security. Because if we must have these elections and the environment is not secure, then we cannot have those elections. Now, for me, I've listened to all the speakers, and um, one of the speakers here, uh, Chief Mike Ozekome, 
Uh, security, security brought us together. And that was the time you were kidnapped. <laughs> and the MC, he didn't mention it as uh, part of his uh, citation. <laughs> Maybe, maybe in this season of uh, National Honors Awards, you should be giving command of the order of kidnapped Nigerians. <laughs> well, having said that, great, 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 great. Well, having said that, you will agree with me that lately we have had to contend with a lot of security challenges. And um, but you would notice that where there is a will, we can con confront these challenges. There has been a drift in the last couple of years. But you observe that once government came out strongly to say, we'll put a stop to this, we are beginning to see some difference. You will agree with me. I don't know whether I'll take what I read on the social, I mean, everything hook line, sink, uh, hook, hook line and sink on the social media. But you see there is a quote or something that we read from, uh, from time to time. There's a head of state who said, once an insurgency exceeds 24 hours, you, you can say the rest. But All right, sir. I do hope this is not the situation. And I do hope that those of you in civil society and other arms of government will do what we can to ensure that government does what is right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That's the much we can take for now. Please, let's appreciate them all. The, the chairman has insisted that we must stick to this clock. We will not do African time. We will close on time. All right. And just before we hear the chairman's closing remark, we'll take a minute, 45 seconds for the communique. Ambassador Joe Atodo will quickly run through that. Can we please welcome Ambassador Joe Atodo? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Joe and the keynote speaker. As we've been told, my name is Ambassador Joseph Atodo. I'm also a pastor with the Charismatic Renewal Ministries. My assignment here is to present the communique for this lecture series, and I'll just read to us. The theme of this year's edition of the annual lecture series the annual lecture series was 2023 general election critical success agents. High profile dignitaries were in attendance of the very important lecture, among whom were Elder Statesman Professor Jerry Gana, CON, former Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, and Director General of the defunct MAMSA. He was the chairman of the event. Chief Dr. Mike Ozekome, SAN, CON, orator and human rights activist, he was the keynote speaker. Dr. Cosmos Ilechuku, the chairman of the African Center for Leadership and general overseer of the Charismatic Renewal Ministries worldwide, he is the convener. Dr. NLB, National Election Situation Room, and Country Director, Action Aid. And Comrade Dr. Mma Ode also spoke. All these extensively rendered presentations on the theme of this lecture series. Other dignitaries present include Engineer Y.Y. Sani who is representative of Interparty Advisory Council, Dr. Annie Frey, Global Director, African Strategic Discipleship Mission. Just a minute. Dr. Pastor Adeolai Lechuku, 
the pioneer and founding president of Nigerian Women in Information Technology and fellow of the Nigerian Computer Society. Honorable Paulinus Nsirim, former Honorable Commissioner for Information River State, Nigeria. And Dr. Robert Agbahia, the chairman of the Change We Need Nigeria Initiative and regional overseer of the Charismatic Human Ministries, Middle Belt Region, Nigeria. The lecture advanced very important issues crucial for the enthroning of the change we need the change we need and position in Nigeria for the realization of its full potentials. And these include a crucial place of devolution of powers among the federated states, the institution and sustenance of true federalism in Nigeria. Now, let me just run to some of the key points because I have two minutes. Some of the key resolutions arrived at, at this lecture series are this. Mobilization of citizen participation. Efforts must be made by all and sundry to encourage the people to come out and mass and vote without intimidation. Then continuous voter registration. Of course, the system of continuous voter registration is in place and all citizens must be encouraged to make sure they secure and hold tight their PVCs and be ready to vote. The election umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, this lecture series underscored the need for it to be granted full independence to operate to ensure the enthronement of free and fair and credible elections in 2023. Also, the electoral umpire must ensure that the register of voters is credible and that all willing voters are appropriately accredited to vote. The lecture also underscored the deployment of election logistics. The electoral umpire must figure out the best way to effect the deployment of staff and materials of, to the designated centers and in good time to enable them, you know, express their franchise and vote. Voter and vote buying, efforts must be made to discourage voter intimidation and vote buying as these are great antagonists to democracy. The process also of accrediting voters to vote on election days must be heat free and all voters should be duly accredited. The lecture also underscored the need for the process of the collation of votes to be enthroned in such a manner that they are transparent and accessible to party agents and observers. Election results should be electronically transmitted to the central server of the electoral umpire directly from the polling station as stipulated by the Electoral Act 2022. It is imperative, the lecture on the card, that the security agents must be deployed for the election and which must be such that they will be impartial and will not interfere with the electoral process while ensuring that there will not be violence and other disruption before, during, and after the elections. And political parties and their candidates are encouraged to behave themselves in line with the laws in place so that the mood of the election should not be interfered with and that candidates will obey relevant electoral laws and guidelines and conduct themselves in a way as not to undermine the peaceful conduct of the election. The lecture also underscored the need for punishment of electoral offenders. And electoral tribunals and courts should be ready and should exhibit the highest sense of responsibility and caution in adjudication of electoral matters to minimize post-election crisis and place the judiciary as an impartial arbiter. 
the federal government, the lecture stressed, has a greater responsibility for a credible election and should do all that is possible by the president to take necessary steps to create the enabling environment for a free and fair election. And civil society organizations and the media are also enjoined to play their roles according to the law to make sure the election 2023 is heat-free, credible, and successful. And the place of prayer for divine intervention must not also be undermined as we must seek the help of the Almighty in seeing to it that the candidates of the choice of Nigerian being the sovereign is properly showcased. And finally, for Nigeria to have a free and fair election in 2023, all stakeholders must make efforts to sincerely play their part with a patriotic spirit, sense of nationalism, and desire that the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. To serve with a heart and mind, one nation bound in freedom, peace and unity, so that greatly, so that great lofty high we will attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just so you know, he did a fantastic job in summarizing that. When what I saw and what he delivered on, he did great. Please, let's appreciate him one more time. And, uh, and okay, correction. Correction. Some of the things said. Unfortunately, we... Enobi is not Dr. Enobi. He either misses or comrade. And I am not doctor. I am either Mrs. or comrade. All right. No I'm Nigerian civil society situation room. Another comrade. Correction. Nigerian civil society situation room. That's our name. Another one is the sir, uh, ambassador. Uh, the preamble talking about umpire. You can say that they have done well in uh, Edo, the, uh, Ondo, uh, Ekiti, and Oshun. And they should maintain the tempo. And they should not go back. You know? All right. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you ma. So Thank you, ma. Uh, the, the communique will be sent to everyone via email. And I'm sure we can effect more of the corrections there. Okay? Please, we're out of time, honestly. We need to move. We need to hear the closing, re the chairman's closing remark. Please, let's welcome Professor Jerry Gana for the closing remark. Okay. Thank you very much. Kindly join me. Put your hands together for the moderator. <laughs> Our panelists, very, very distinguished uh, participants in this. We've just had a uh, community read. Those in favor of adopting this comrade, uh, this communique, let me hear you say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. So we've all unanimously adopted the comrade. <laughs> so th thank you very, very much. But please, uh, in that, uh, the communique was very well read and we've now adopted it. But uh, I'm sure that when you are doing the final thing, you remember the very important contribution of our restoration of our values. Very, very, very important. Now, I have two more things in my closing remarks. I, I'm sure you agree with me that this panel of very, very enlightened discussions have done very well. Kindly join me. Put your hands together for them. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. You've done excellently well. Finally, I'd like to thank the organizers for the honor of requesting me to chair this occasion. I feel tremendously honored. And I'd like to uh, conclude by 
insisting that we as the people at this point in time we've chosen the philosophy of democracy as the way of governance we will agree on democracy central to democracy is the popular will the will of the people not the will of a few so democracy must respect the will of the people the will of the people is best expressed in a free fair and credible election we've done our best the new electoral law is far far better than the ones we've had before do we agree the electoral law is better Therefore, everything seems to be in place by the grace of God, especially if the man of God will lead all the men of God and all of us to pray. We are hoping that the 2023 election will be qualitatively better. Do we agree with that? Therefore, I'd like to plead with all of us that this is a very important starting point. If the people of Nigeria would express their will in a very free and fair election in 2023, trusting that there will be peace and security, that the elections will be acceptable, then the leaders that emerge from that election have legitimacy. They should be allowed to govern effectively. But we, the people, should give them priorities. And as our lead speaker has said today, one of the key priorities must be making sure that we are able to agree on a new people's constitution. They should not defer that to any future. Secondly, the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. We want to be secure in our own land. Therefore, security and welfare of the people is paramount. They shouldn't spend the next four years chasing shadows. They must ensure peace and security. Nigerians are wonderful people. Give them peace. Give them security. They will do wonderful things for themselves. Therefore, we want to rise as our great man of God will lead us in prayer that the 2023 elections will be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, doctor, kindly lead us as we conclude as part of the chairman's conclusion. <laughs> Let us pray. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love the, the world that he gave us. His son, who yielded his life and atonement for sins, and opened the life's gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Our dear Father, we are so very grateful to you for the opportunity of this lecture. Thank you for the way you brought us all together under this roof to discuss and rub our minds around an issue that is so important to us. The issue of a credible election in 2023. Lord, thank you for all the key players that made this occasion a success. Thank you for the committee that put it together. Thank you for the resource persons 
particularly for the keynote speaker, whom you have used so marvelously to educate us and to help us understand things as they should be. Thank you, O oh God, for in particular for our chairman, a man that has labored in your vineyard for so many years and is still standing strong. We commit him into your hand, praying that, O oh God, your grace will continue to abound upon him. in our different spheres of influence, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for our moderator, for giving her the grace to be able to conduct the affairs of this meeting in a way that it has come, and we are all pleased and satisfied with our work. Everlasting Father, we pray that every single one of us that have come here, we go home safely. Amen. Nobody will have any problem on the road. Amen. Thank you. For 2023 election, we come and be a, and, and pass as one of the very best we have had in this country. Yeah. This election, oh God, you are going to help us to elect a leader that will be a pan-Nigerian leader yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every, every effort of the enemy to truncate this election will come to nothing. You are going not only to protect us through your security, human security agents, you are going to deploy legions of your angels to also be on the watch and protect your people. We all know you and glorify your name. Let this lecture series continue. Continue to supply the resources in terms of funding and in terms of resource persons, quality Nigerians. When we approach them, Lord, grant them grace to accept to come. And let it be that this discourse will continue to go on until we arrive at the promised land that you have a guarantee for Nigerians. It shall surely be well with all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Surely, all the days of our lives, and we shall do it. Okay, we we'll just Amen. quickly. I think uh, just the vote Thank of thanks much. from do a the quick LOC vote of chairman. Yes. All right. On the behalf of uh, the committee, uh, the local organizing committee, I want to thank uh, Prof. I want to thank Chief. I have made our day today. I want to plead that uh, uh, another time when we call on you, you have seen who we are. Please uh, come again next time. And uh, all of us who came from the press want to say thank you. We trust that um, uh, the delay of these uh, messages in the televisions uh, available in the radio stations uh, through the uh, print media will also come out in a very beautiful way. I want to thank all of you uh, for making it a big day for us. God bless you and God continue to bless you. Amen. Please, a quick announcement. We have some light refreshment which we could not serve here. As you move out of the Sheraton, on the right, you see a red matrix. As you're going, they'll give you a pack of refreshment. As you move out of the gate and you turn right, you see a red matrix car parked there. Pick up a refreshment there. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay, thank you, everybody. The LOC chairman will lead the head table for lunch. Yes.